I'm super excited to talk about this fight. So we have Alexander Volkanovsky. I did rewatch this versus one. Max Holloway. You rewatched this one already? Yeah. Okay. Incredible. All right. Such a good fight. And you, I, Will, I'm going to go on right now, and I'm going to apologize to Volkanovsky. <laughs> yeah. In my head, in my head, he still wasn't the champ. You know, because in Ooh. my eyes, I thought that Max Holloway had beat him the last two times. I wasn't giving him the the uh, respect that he was due. And granted, he worked Korean Zombie, smashed Brian Ortega, right? So it's not like he's not beating the top echelons of the Aldo, division. Chad Mendes. But in my in my head, <laughs> yeah, I'm nice. just thinking Max Holloway beat him the last couple of times. So Max is As you, still my you champion. I was like, hashtag not closer. my champion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Volkanovski came in here and just pretty much gave me the bird, man. Yeah. And said, so here's your champion. I had I had Volkanovski winning their first fight, but I had Max winning the second fight. Uh, mm. So that's what was so interesting about this one. Um, so in your head, it was a real rubber match. Yeah, I think, and I think in a lot of a lot of people's, it was that that I mean the the second fight I thought was a pretty the, the I don't know pretty clear for me that that Holloway won that one, and it, it's because of like the adjustments that he made, right? Because Volkanovski, we we, te- we were texting and Volkanovski's feints are insane. And the mm-hmm. reason his feints are so good is because he actually commits with his strikes. You know what I mean? So like when he yep. feints, you're like, I have to react to that because his strikes are so dangerous. And it works both ways. Because then when he feints, you're like, I have to react to his feint. Because if he's not feinting, it is damaging. <laughs> so like yep. his, his feints make his striking better and his striking make his feints better. And one of the things that he did so well, everyone was like, oh, the leg kicks, the leg kicks in the first fight, right? The leg kicks are what won him the fight against Max Holloway because Max Holloway would come in heavy on that lead leg to land his his straight shots. And Volkanovski's just chewing up his legs and that bridged the gap in the striking. Um, and But then Max made the adjustment in the second fight and that's how he got the knockdowns early in the fight because instead of coming in planting for the jab, he's coming with that floating that floating step where it's almost like he's going to throw a teep kick with his lead leg but then he just floats in, and and Volkanovski has to d- jump back. He can't throw the he can't throw the low kick because if he throws a low kick, it's it's checked basically because the right, the lead leg is up, uh, and now he's in in range for for Holloway. So, and that's what you see in this fight, right? So the first fight is that step up inside leg kick from Volkanovski. It sets up his hands. It sets up the feints. I mean. It, Rarely do you see the shorter guy be able to control the distance, but that's what he can do with that step up leg kick. And then the second fight, Volkan or Max Holloway makes the adjustment. All right, cool. The leg kicks are what he built his whole game on in the first one. I'm going to take those away with this floating step in the way I float in, and that's what was able to land his jabs and all that stuff. He landed that the the kick that dropped him right. And I was like, okay, the third one. Who makes the adjustments? And it was almost I I, I picked Holloway coming into this fight, but I I. Thought I should have picked Volkanovski because Holloway made the adjustment in the second fight. So now it's kind of on Volkanovski to make the adjustment. Because if you're Holloway, you don't know what what to adjust to. But Volkanovski does. Volkanovski can say, okay, he's he's throwing that or he's floating in with his lead leg up. I can time that with the overhand. That's how you beat that float in. But the second fight, it didn't work because he, it takes a while to make that adjustment real time. But mm-hmm. now he has a game plan to work against. And then you see it in this fight, Max Holloway, again, he's floating in, floating in, floating in. And then Volkanovski's just cracking him with that right hand every single time he came in. And then it busted him up over the eyebrow like this. And I thought, Holloway's going to have to make an adjustment here. He can't just keep floating in. And he kind of never did. He just kept kind of approaching it the same way. Until the end of the fight, he started getting a little bit more reckless because he needed to. But that's kind of how rematches go, right? Or trilogies especially. It's like, who won the first one? Can he make the adjustments? Oh, he made the adjustments? Can the other guy make the adjustments? And Volkanovski is a fucking champion, so he can make those adjustments. Sorry if that was long-winded. <laughs> no, and you have uh, Eugene uh, in his corner, too. Yeah. Which and, is and a, Lopez. a master also. Let's and Lopez. Lopez. Uh, and, man, I was just so impressed with uh, Volkanovski's speed, too. Dude. Because Holloway's oh hands God. are some of the fastest in the division, and he made mm-hmm. Holloway look slow. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but I was super impressed with his boxing, the the adjustments that you had pointed out. Um, and I'm super frustrated right now looking at the different memes <laughs> being like, hey, 
Holloway's going to be forever be the number one contender. And it's like, no. Yeah. Holloway was a champion. Yeah, yeah. He held the title. He had for several a long title time. defenses. <laughs> yeah, he held it for a long time, man. He's going to go down as one of the best featherweights. Maybe not the best, but one of the best featherweights uh, to have fought in uh, the UFC. Uh, so everybody yeah. needs to stop with this. Hey, Max Holloway is going to forever be the number one contender. It, I mean, it, yeah, that, that's he's already just, cemented uh, himself. It, yeah, he doesn't need to prove anything else. He, he's he's one of the best ever. Uh, where does this put yeah. Volkanovski for you? I mean, uh, yeah, we way. talked about it. I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, uh, pound for pound number one for sure. Uh, I, I think he's pound for pound over um, Usman at this point because let's be real. Now it's regardless of of how you thought the fights went. It's not like he got blown out in in the first couple of fights, and and it was like, oh man, Holloway should have won that. He cleared him out. It was there were close fights, ten rounds, yep. very highly contested. This was a five round sweep. Uh, so I think that's more impressive than anything Usman's done at this point. You beat someone like Max Holloway just one time it is incredible. This is three times, and one is dominant. You bury the hatchet with this win. I think that, yeah. that puts him pound for pound number one. And it's not like it's just – he's not just a striker. He's not just a wrestler. I mean, the guy is good everywhere. And now he's talking about going up to 155 and challenging mm-hmm. Charlie Olives, whoever ends up uh, winning the title, right? So yeah. uh, do, do you like that move? You like you like the idea of him hopping up to 155? I, I don't know. Kind of. They talk about like, oh, the, I think that should only happen when, when you clear out a division. And we still got some guys that I would like to see him face. I mean, Volkanovski has the opportunity to surpass Jose Aldo as the, as the featherweight goat. And it's, yeah. it's if he beats Yair, uh, Cater, if he, if, I mean, if he starts beating these guys, like, I mean, it, it'd be insane. The resume, he it'd be undeniable at that point. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, going up and winning another belt, it does add to the legacy, but it also, in my opinion, kind of detracts a little bit when there's like clear guys that that he could have been fighting. You know, you have yeah. Yair versus uh, Ortega next, right? Is that that's happening? Is that what they scheduled? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, maybe he goes up and fights. Timeline wise, I don't know how that's going to work though. Uh, if he goes up and fights Charlie Olives, whatever happens up there, because uh, if if Yair beats Brian Ortega, it's like, well, that's a title shot. You know, mm-hmm. clearly, I mean, he went, he had a contested fight against Max Holloway. He came up short, but then if he, but he, it kind of put him right at that top level. Um, I think he kind of became legit to a lot of people, including myself. That was a real, that's like, just what I was about to say. I think that's the point where everybody was like, all right, yeah, you're just here. He's in the top yeah, three. He is very good. He, yeah. And he's gonna He's a contender. Yeah. And which I is weird to beats, say, because he's been in the top 10 for a while. Yeah. Well, it's because he's, I mean, how many guys have uh, a USADA suspension for, going missing three times i mean the guy's almost fucked up his entire career it's a cartel. it's crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <cartel. laughs> yeah but uh were hiding. yeah but if he beats ortega and i do think he beats ortega uh I, I think uh that's a title shot and i would love to add that that name on volkanovsky's resume if he can beat yair that's another it's also another style that that volkanovsky has not faced yet um and that's that also further cements you in history is like he fought a wrestler. He fought the strikers. He fought the crazy jujitsu guy like Brian Ortega who snatches the neck and it's over, but he got out. And then the, the crazy unorthodox striker with the back elbow knockouts like Yair Rodriguez. Like if you could beat every single style, that's how you become the Jose Aldo of the division, you know? Yeah. So I don't sure. know. Hey, by the way, uh, props to Holloway when they're talking about being uh, the best uh, featherweight of all time. He's like, did we already forget about Jose Aldo? I know. Like you know nine like, years oh, or something crazy. Like, <laughs> I love this guy, man. Max Holloway, one of the greats. One of the greats. Yeah. Um, but all right, we man. have, dude. Yeah, we have Yair versus Ortega. Like, it's it's on the sixteenth. It's in a couple weeks. Yeah. So, like, dude, why are we making any decisions about going up to lightweight? And maybe that's what they're depending on. If if Ortega wins that fight, maybe they're like, all right, yeah, go up to lightweight. We don't really need the rematch, but. If Yair wins, timeline wise, you guys both just fought in July. You guys perfect will timing. Both will be ready at the end same of the time year. Then. Let's go. Let's November, go. December. Yeah, Let's do exactly. It. Dude, can you imagine down. if Volkanovski? Fuck, dude, he has so much potential, man. If he fights Korean Zombie, wins emphatically. Fights Max Holloway, wins emphatically, and then 
fights Yair Rodriguez in the same year. That's a year right there. That is very he smashes good. him. Oh yeah, if he can. Uh, Frankie I mean, Edgar. I mean, if he because right now uh, they call it in the fourth fourth against Korean Zombie. In this in this uh, year alone, he's nine and zero in, in rounds. He hasn't lost a round. He's got nine rounds that he's won. If he can clean sweep Yair, that's impressive. Wow, but, man. Brian Ortega also might just snatch that year's neck. I mean, this <laughs> might go down as one of the uh, the best runs, uh, not just in the division, so, but uh, in UFC history, man. When we take a look at the folks that he's faced, yeah, it's it's very, I mean, very high caliber. And then you look at like uh, Calvin Cater just lost to Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett's probably a win away from a title shot. That's a new opponent as well. I cannot believe Zabit retired. Imagine if he also has a beat on his resume. He's in a house of learning doctors now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Was, That's what he's doing. <laughs> it was Johnny Hopkins. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you picked up on that reference. It's all yeah. about who you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but with, uh, I know you're right, Faber. There's a video of him out right now that where he's um, lobbying for uh, Josh Emmett to get the next shot uh, at Volkanovski. Yeah. And he needs another win. Man, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see because he's he's gonna get to the point here pretty soon where he's just going through the, you know, the division and knocking him down. So I'm yeah. sure Josh Emmett's time will will be coming. I think so, and and well, it's also one of those things that like that should happen when a champion is dominant and keeps winning. Like the threshold for getting a title shot should start to diminish. You know, like you yep. should be able to be Alex Pajeda, not even in the top fifteen, and then fight number four, and then yeah, because <laughs> who else? Trying to mix it up, for sure. Trying to mix it up. Let's All right, man. Names on the resume. Anything What's else on the co-main event? Uh, no, I, I don't know what, what's next for Holloway. I don't know who he fights next. Let's talk about going up to lightweight, but it's like, I mean, I, I think he's too small for lightweight. I don't know. For sure. For sure. We'll see what he does. All right. Hey, everybody. Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.